So Sally, you're the one of the most interesting and remarkable persons in the industry nowadays. Thank you, thank you. I should tell. That. You're a CDO, a member of Forbes Technology Council. That's right, right. yep. And uh, I assume a very busy woman with a pretty busy schedule. <laughs> yes, yeah, absolutely. Yes. How did you get into blockchain? Uh, really seeing the purpose of the technology and how it can transform multiple inter industries. That's what really got me interested in that. Um, also, as well as my kind of hands-on applied work in technology, I've also got a professorship and that specializes in blockchain and AI and kind of advanced technologies. And so I saw quite an early stage how it could be particularly useful for things like transformation in developing countries. I think it can be a real leapfrogging technology. So when I saw that, I wanted to be at the very heart of that. A professorship where? Uh, University of Barcelona. There's a, there's a few. So I do a lot of work with different universities, okay. um, both research-led ones and community-orientated universities too. How did you get into the uh, technology space in the first place? Okay, so I've worked um, particularly in the communication sector for a number of years um, as a CTO, so managing big teams about that and very much applied. I've been hands-on in tech myself, so the management of it and hands-on operational side of things. So can you tell us more about these, the, the Forbes Council? What kind of organization is that? Uh, so that's an invite only and it's kind of thought leadership and advanced technologies. Um, okay. uh, yeah, so again, for me, it's integration of technology and how you can apply that for transformational change. That's the big area I'm focusing focusing on, and particularly for social impact. Is it like a think tank? Yes, very much so, yeah. And so obviously you can publish in Forbes. Um, there are special meetings that you can do to share information. And for me, you know, open sharing of knowledge is absolutely fundamental. You know, that so many things are kind of behind firewalls or you can only go if you've got the money to pay to go to a certain event. And I'm all about how we can share things more openly. I mean, awareness around blockchain is absolutely critical anyway. I mean, so many people would conflate Bitcoin with blockchain, for example, quite understand and so I want to break down barriers that's kind of part of my ethos but the council is not about the, the blockchain only right no no that's no, all uh, Forbes take is about all, all range of technologies but I particularly focus on the emergent kind of disruptive technologies and the integration of them what are the projects you're mostly interested in today? What are you working on today? Okay, so there's a number of projects. Um, one of them is I'm CEO of something called SACS, which is Sustainable Asset Exchange. Um, and that's working with supply chains for things like um, oud, which is something you extract from the aguila tree um, in places like Malaysia and Thailand. Um, at the moment, a lot of those trees are being destroyed and damaged in the process. And a lot of farmers are not getting fair reward for all their hard work. Um, and also there's a lot of um, unethical trade as well. So there's a lot of black market for this. Um, and so what we're doing is we are adding blockchain into that supply chain so you can track it all the way from source to, to purchase and there's a fair trading mechanism for that as well but it's not just do there's other things for example bamboo which is a fantastic alternative for plastic so yeah around supply chain I think that's one of the biggest areas where blockchain is a natural fit and again can really reward people um, from the ground up I saw your presentation yesterday and yep. you had this th very good slide of the use cases. Yes. <laughs> you were pretty much the first one, the first person here yep. talking about the use cases. Can we talk about the use cases of that course, you're yeah, interested ab in? Of Absolutely. Yeah. No, I think that's so important. It's got to be tangible. And um, we have to have information out there that shows that products and, and projects have gone from pilot to actualization and right. in a range of sectors as well. Because I think one of the big problems at the moment is people don't think it's accessible. You know, remember we all have a smartphone in our pocket, don't we? Um, but with blockchain, it feels like it's something out there or something that's financially orientated in the fintech space and it's so much more than that you know I'm involved in projects in education in healthcare um, obviously in supply chain that I mentioned um, and with financial things there's obviously around financial literacy and financial inclusion which is a very different area to the traditional fintech so that's what I'm trying to get out there is things that are tangible happening now or at a very advanced stage. Can you name some of the use cases? Okay okay well so I mentioned a few in, in supply chain management supply chain, right. that are happening now and obviously they're based on existing businesses as well I mean that particular example was started in 2008 so it's a natural integration of a new technology to take it to that next stage and really make a difference and I think that's that's exciting as well because again we often see things that have come from concept to to um, you know early development but not from something that's existing and again that transitional point makes it more accessible so that's something I'm trying to showcase um, other things around education for example rewarding participation um, so there's a project in Africa that's doing something about that at the moment and so Do when you know people the name? yeah I'm, I'm, I'm 
I'm allowed to say so much because it's UN backed oh. and it's in a pilot, oh. but it's quite advanced. But so I, I can share that as of the 21st okay. of September. So I'll, right. I'll give you an update on that one because sure. it's being announced at a special UN event that I'm doing. Um, but yeah, that's that's really really exciting. Again, that that participation and the reward that's tokenized for for taking part and doing extra things after school as well, like peer to peer learning activities and and different clubs and things, it's supported back into the family. So again, you're starting to make changes that community orientated and allowing people to stay in school for longer things like that I think it's massively important um, and again all these projects as well I always stress things about being co-created so particularly when you're working in developing nations it's not coming in and saying right we're going to change everything and, mm -hmm. and impose something that's not the way at all it's working together um, so it's very much that, that co-created approach that I, I can't stress that highly enough it, it needs to be like that and we can't assume that we know all the answers to something it's got to be something where we're, we're offering things that might make a difference but we need to work on that collectively. Brock Pierce told me yesterday that um, blockchain will be first adopted in a developing countries. Yes. Because developed countries has a have um, a working system and uh, people in developing countries have never had any bank accounts or a properly working banking system whatsoever. Mm. That's why blockchain will enter those countries and like work there. Yes. You agree? Yes, absolutely. Yeah, so it's a massive leapfrog opportunity. So you can go from cash to digital currency and take out bricks and mortar as an example. That's a classic one. Um, and at the moment what we need to do, and again it's something I stress, is we need to look at things like infrastructure. So I, I mean, I've got quite a telecoms background. And again, I, I thought the slide I put in yesterday, some of the partners on projects that I'm doing are from that industry, because that example I mentioned there, that can work seamlessly, but only if we've got phone signals that are reliable. You know, if you've got five five hours until you get the next signal, then you can't do the processing of the transaction. So things like that have to be um, supported. So working with partnerships and developing that is absolutely critical too. You're working with the UN, right? Yes, absolutely. So they are very much interested in uh, Definitely, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah, the potential has been really, really seen. And also things like social impact funding. So I'm on the advisory board for something around a specific SDG, so Sustainable Development Goal Focused uh, Social Impact Fund that's also being announced uh, on the 21st of uh, September. There's basically an SDG week that's happening along there. So I'm doing two keynotes on the 19th and the 21st. So there's a lot of information that's coming out then and there's International Peace Day and things like that as well. So yeah, some really you know, transformational events and some really good debates that are bringing academic academia, uh, civil society, um, obviously big corporate institutions, but also bleeding edge disruptors together as well. So again, that's how I like to work, bringing people together. That's absolutely critical for change. As you mentioned Malaysia, well, which countries do you also work? I also do, as, as, as well as those areas, I also do a lot of work in the MENA region. Um, so I'm going out to Dubai after this trip. Um, and again, that's something that's been really exciting. So yeah, you know, as well as there's a big appetite, obviously for cutting edge innovation, it's always been the way and they've got a minister for AI and blockchain for some period of time and a specific vision statement around this too but also I've been working probably for about two years now with people that are really trying to make changes for example getting girls into coding and extending the education system and making real change there for me that's massively important uh, I mentioned in the talk yesterday that I founded something called aspirational futures so again there's gonna be a lot more of that coming out in a couple of weeks time but massively important to me and it's something I've been doing for five to six years doing different projects in different countries but particularly the developing nations um, but also in big cities and things as well where you can have have a great clarity between people who have got access to a lot and people who haven't. Um, so in terms of that, I'm reclaiming space and really kitting that out with access to platforms around AI and you know developing new skills. Um, I've built courses in these areas as well, but also there's space there for socialization and arts and to be creative. And you know, I think at a very early age at the moment, we get kind of prescribed down a path of you know making choices. And I want to kind of open that back up again. You know, I think it's really important. I mean, tech skills are fantastic, but you need to have the creative imagination and confidence around that too so for me that that's huge there's one question I ask um, uh, everyone I interview hmm. here so there's a latest study by Gartner yes about the hype cycle okay yes it, yeah where it well it's, it's about the emerging technologies the blockchain technology which yes. goes from the um, the peak of the inflated expectations yes. down to the disillusionment yes. we're like witnessing it right now do you agree yes. that the impact is fading um I, or you wouldn't say so? No, I think it's dissipated in different areas. There's again going back to these different sectors. So I, I don't think that, that what they're showing at the moment is um, equal across all sectors. Um, and again, I'm particularly stressing there the developing nations and the work I'm doing there. Um, uh, that, that's, a, that's a huge focus for me. So I don't think it applies across the board. It's, it's context specific, like most things. It probably applies to financial yes, aspect, right? Yes, agreed. Yeah, I think that's really fintech dominated.
what do you see, uh, what do you see as the main challenges that blockchain industry is facing right now? Uh, well, one of them is definitely around awareness. Um, as I mentioned right at the beginning, that there's not enough quality information out there. And unless you're really embedded in the industry, people don't really know where to go to get that. So one of the things I'm doing and starting from next week is I've got a new column. Uh, it's something called Coin Rivet, which specializes in blockchain and cryptocurrency. And again, I've been really quite impressed. It's a pro bono thing, but it's really focusing on quality. Um, so that for me is a great you know avenue to do that. So I think sharing about that, getting as much information about that as possible, that's open access is key. Um, and something you said earlier on, tangible use cases. We, we've got a collective responsibility, really, I think, to share as much as possible about that. Um, but there are obviously technical things around scalability and, you know, obviously those areas like that. But for me, I'm starting at the, the basics in terms of, you know, if we go mainstream, people need to understand how this works. We need to take away the complexity. Um, and again, I do a lot on social media and quite often there's always that focus on the dark side. Um, and I want to show, and I can continually in all the keynotes I do, how we can harness this technology for good. Um, I think the more we do that, we'll get a much better balanced discussion. Um, and in terms of mainstream, people really understand what the potential actually is. You said that people need to understand how this works, mm. but why would they need to understand that? Why would they be interested in blockchain? What do you think, especially in um, developing because of, countries? Uh, well, I think there's always a fear with new technology. There's always that kind of, you know, resistance to change is, is a huge thing. And particularly when, you know, newspaper headlines, you know, take AI, which obviously integrates particularly highly on a lot of projects that I'm doing, you know, headlines are like rise the robots or things are going to take our jobs. It tends to focus on what technology will take away or on the crypto side all around right. the volatility. We yes. don't see much focus on technology for good. You know, um, my new book is focusing on that area and it's all full of tangible case studies. You know, every keynote, I'm really getting that it's to be the heart. Out, yeah? It comes out in March, so oh. for London Book Week. So yeah, really excited about that. But the whole theme about technology for good and social impact rides through that very, that very nature. So, you know, disruption can be a really good thing. So I want to help people to realize, you know, this can help you um, in your daily job. You know, you can optimize your time better and use that for more productive things. It doesn't mean you have to lose your job completely. So those are the sort of things. So it can be something about efficiency and opening up time in your job, or it can be something that's, you know, on a bigger scale around changing lives um, and, uh, you know, really opening up access to opportunity. So yeah, I massively care about that. It's my kind of my life's passion. And, you know, my legacy project, I really want to be the aspirational future side of things. Because I, if I could have a hub like that in every city, that's that's my dream. Um, and I'll, I'll work my, you know, I'll, you know, I'll work everything I've got to make that happen. Yeah, I really care about that. Yes, I wish you good luck. Thank, Thank you. you so Cheers, much. Cheers, pleasure. Thank really enjoyed it. Thank you.